This is a, a great opportunity to see one of the kind of mythical sites of Scottish archaeology. The, the Cochno Stone is one of these sites that people have heard about, there's rumours about it, but very few people remember seeing it when, before it was buried, and so to be part of the revealing of it is really exciting. The Cochno Stone is a large ancient rock located at West Dunbartonshire, Scotland. Measuring 42 feet by 26 feet, it was first discovered in 1887 by the Reverend James Harvey. Such a large stone, once sitting proud upon the surface, inevitably attracted people's attention for thousands of years. The stone features around 90 carved ancient images, considered to be one of the finest sets of ancient petroglyphs in the world. It was reburied in 1965 by archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann, who decided to bury the massive slab under several feet of soil to protect it from damage and to prevent people from adding their own modern carvings to it. In 2015, it was partially re-exposed for investigation during a three-day dig and a more complete re-exposure followed a year later. So far, archaeologists cannot agree on what is exactly depicted on the massive slab, yet the images are clearly strange. Often when you discover that specialists cannot come to a joint conclusion, the subject is of a controversial nature. There is no consensus among archaeologists on the meaning of the intricate symbols found on its surface. Experts plan to digitally map the stone, and that data obtained could shine more light on its history. Its purpose and the people who created the artwork, they believed, lived more than 5,000 years ago. Dr. Kenny Brophy led the excavation and described the experience of seeing the stone as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because of the array of markings on it, the Cockney Stone has been recognized as being of national importance and designated as a scheduled monument. Due to its unusual illustrations and the choice in shapes and placement thereof, many researchers have come to the conclusion that the Cockno Rock could have been some form of star map. The mystery of its strange decorations will undoubtedly persist for many years to come. The Mancha. When did they build it? Located upon a hill 600 meters above the Adriatic Sea in Albania, Amantia and its port Oricum are mentioned for the first time by pseudo Silax in 330 BC. Yet there are specific features of this fascinating fortress, which is indicative of a now lost civilization. Polygonal masonry, advanced megalithic archways, among other ancient anomalies, litter the site, just like that of Delphi located within Greece. Recognized as Greeks by the Therorodokai of Delphi, the inhabitants were allowed to take part in the Delphic competitions. The true builders of the original site, however, remains unknown. The massive, once impenetrable walls were built before the end of the 4th century BC, and literary sources report them as an Illyrium rather than Epiroti or Macedonian foundation. However, any explanation as to how these ruins were constructed remains absent. Several monuments at the site still survive to this day. The fortified polygonal walls measured at over two kilometers long, a gated entrance, a temple now attributed to the Greek god Aphrodite, and several tombs in the northeastern necropolis. Additionally, like many other areas claimed as the work of the Greek Empire, an impressive stadium also still remains, built east of the ancient city on a natural terrace. Clearly indicative of a tremendous age, any unexplained architecture attached to the stadium, however, has now been lost. But the site of Delphi, the focus of later inhabitants' devotion, still possesses a polygonal floor. One of the reasons for the construction of the site, and indeed what we believe was a later re-inhabitation of its geographically strategic position. Amantia occupied an important defensive position above the Alus River Valley to the east and overlooked an ancient route to the coast and Bay of Alon. Although, like many other sites in the area, they are claimed as Grecian relics, any explanation as to how these feats were achieved remains unexplained. Thus, we feel any continued attribution to a known ancestor can be argued as inaccurate. It is a site which we find highly compelling.
Polygonal masonry is undoubtedly a top trump argument, along with tool mark patterning, and indeed pyramidal and other structural forms which can be found across the globe, which prove there was not only once an ocean-going ancient civilization, but a worldwide highly advanced superpower who once dominated the Earth. The proof is there for all to see, yet en masse, how they incorporate these proofs into their critical decision-making faculties is still up for debate. Yet regardless, this proof of their past capabilities are still on display the world over, a duly awarded testament to their building prowess. Although many have attempted to explain these stones, some claiming they are of artificial or geopolymer origins, Others claim they are somehow a reformed rock from a plaster of Paris type constituent of the original stone itself. Some even claim a plant was responsible. Any definitive answer as to how these stones were shaped and placed, or indeed any recreation of these claimed methods, elude us to this day. A lost technology from a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Cusco, which translates as the city of the Puma, holds some of the most exquisite and best preserved polygonal masonry to be found anywhere. Home to the famous 12-sided stone, something which many are not aware of, however, is that it is also home to dozens of carvings and structures, which were intended as artistic masonry renditions of animals, one of which, namely the Puma. Academic hypothesis suggests that these creations were built by the Inca to once form the boundary walls of an ancient temple, yet like the countless other areas we explore here on our channel, any explanation as to how the walls were constructed, or indeed why pumas and other animals were incorporated into this enigmatic stonework, is absent from all and any academically accepted historical description of their origin. We feel that these structures were built for a reason, even stretching as far as Egypt, present as casing stones on the pyramids of Egypt themselves. They wanted future man to witness this stonework, built to last and to remain immovable. It is as if they were trying to tell us something about their existence, and indeed the true history and perhaps future fate of mankind. We find Cusco's Puma and indeed the lost knowledge itself, highly compelling.